viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we got a fresh one here. Uh, we got a 13 grand caravan. It's got the 3.6 in it. Uh, it's come here from another shop uh, and another shop before that shop, I guess. Uh, so I'm told uh, apparently the vehicle was in an accident. Um, it looks like it was hit in the right quarter back there, maybe in the back end. Um, and then the story I'm told is that the vehicle sat for a little while, a few months, and then, you know, they got it fixed or whatever, and uh, we're driving it, went into some place for a service, and right after they had the oil change, money lights on, car runs like poo, and here we are. So it went to, like I said, another shop that brought it here. Um, they said that they played some Swaptronics as far as shifting around coils and um, injectors and, you know, doing various things, um, which I guess I don't really pay too much mind to uh, because we're just going to do our own diagnosis anyways. Uh, and I'll give you kind of the rundown. I start the vehicle up and it seems to run fine. It starts fine. Sounds normal when it cranks. But then you put it in gear and then all, all of a sudden it just starts just starts shaking like crazy. Um, I guess it's a single cylinder misfire. To me personally, it feels like more than a single cylinder misfire. Um, it does have some code stored in it. Um, had a whole host of code stored in it and I assume it's because they were unplugging stuff um, you know in an effort to you know chase down this problem um, I was kind of hesitant to do a video right off the bat it's kind of late it's about well it's almost seven o'clock at night um, I just wanted to kind of see what I was getting into it's an extra vehicle on top of you know regularly scheduled appointments so I kind of wanted to get an idea as to what's happening and so what the heck? We'll bring the camera and see what we find out. All right, well, first thing first, uh, I do have the virus plugged in. I'll show you what it sounds like. So cranking sounds normal. Sounds normal when it sits there and idles. And then all of a sudden, let's see here, we'll put it in gear. And there we go, right into a, a bad miss. I think we can see it on the engine out here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Engine's tremoring. So things, you know, shake, shaking like crazy. You know, you can see stuff kind of vibrating around there. So obvious misfire. All right. Um, we'll grab the codes here. So I cleared out the, uh, like I said, there was some codes in there for, you know, loss of comm with basically every controller. I assume they had the uh, ECM unplugged at some point. I see a lot of broken connectors and a lot of missing stuff on this engine. It's definitely been uh, touched, we'll call it. Uh, so the code that immediately sets is this 2308, mission three, secondary circuit, insufficient ionization. Um, so I took, and uh, let's see here. I checked to see what the code setting criteria was on this. Uh, so let's see, the second edition is what we're looking for. Uh, if the PCM detects secondary ignition burn time is incorrect, too short or not present, an error is detected, one trip fault, uh, three good trips will turn off the engine light. So essentially, the way the best I can understand is I haven't I've never tracked on this code before uh, the PCM is doing exactly what it says here it's looking at secondary ignition burn time uh, so I was kind of curious how how it does that because let me show you you know I was trying to see what what kind of coils these had and they're just a two wire coil so the only way that the ECM can see the burn time is by monitoring uh, secondary voltage or I'm sorry primary voltage you know just like we would with a lab scope because uh, on a two-wire coil you know it's about as basic as you get primary reflects secondary um, and that's the only thing it must be looking at I mean it's there's no other possible way for that to do that as far as seeing burn time and seeing the actual ignition event it's got to be looking at uh, coil primary voltage um, so basically what we have to do well, we can pop in here. Let's just for the heck of it, we'll pop in. We'll look at some data. Um, we'll pop in ignition data here. 
it's actually shutting down the number three cylinder. I was kind of scrolling through some of this. Let's see here. You know, so our cam sinks are in, in sync. Gotta find, um, maybe it's an O2 sensor data, I can't recall. Because once it detects a problem, you know, with the ionization on that cylinder, it shuts down that injector that we can see right here. So here's injectors two, four, and six. So this is gonna be our front our front three cylinders, two, four, six. They're running about you know 2.4 milliseconds. But look at cylinder number three, it's at zero. Let me go cycle the key. I'm gonna shut it off, start it back up. So we can see briefly, it turns that injector on, but I'm assuming that, you know, this is going to be the strategy of the ECM to, is to shut that injector off, you know, once it detects a problem on that cylinder with uh, the ignition coil. That's what I'm assuming. All right. I don't even know where we're going with this. Anyhow, it's getting late, got a bit of a headache, but we're still going to get through this. The injector, let's see, can we, can we look at the ignition coils? Probably gonna make a lot of mistakes here. Uh, so ignition coils, like I say, pretty basic. They get their power from the auto shutdown relay. Ignition coil number three. And then it has the coil driver from the ECM. So it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, apparently this stuff has already been all switched around from the other shop, you know, along with um, the injector. So, I guess we're gonna go back here. We're gonna do some basic primary ignition coil checks and see, you know, are we missing power to the coil? Um, did the coil go bad and burned up the driver? You know, do we got, let's see, we got a connector here. This is not a factory wire diagram here. So we have a connector here somewhere. You know, we got a bad connection. You know, what do we got? So that is the direction. So let's get started. All right, two, four, and six are in the back. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I need to start over. Uh, what is this? Two, four, and six are in the front. One, three, and five are in the back. Um, sometimes I get frustrated working on stuff from other shops because everything's been touched. And uh, I mean, there's broken, broken stuff everywhere, it's including this, which makes our life easy. The hold down for this air intake tube is busted. You see the rubber laying back here. I assume this is probably the bolt that goes in it. I don't know. We'll set that to the side. Uh, we'll take and pull this air horn off. That's the intake air temp sensor there. The clamp in the back is loose on this. Hey! Kind of missing something here. Like the air filter, maybe? Awesome! Oh. Well. What do we got to do to get this out of here? No, never mind. It's already loose with my kid. five right I don't believe this wire color let's look at see what our wire color is supposed to be so here's what we have we've got so the common wire it's gonna be this brown one it's gonna be from our auto shutdown relay and then this has a blue with the orange stripe but I see the I see all the bolts and all the coils back here are loose so the coils just kind of sitting here uh, but that's brown with orange let me see the wire diagram that says violet with red what it's supposed to be. That's all. 
awesome. So either Mitchell is wrong, as usual. Let's see if any of these other colors, of course, can we see the front cylinders? I mean, I could be wrong, I could be on the wrong cylinder. But this is, this, this cam sits ahead further, this is definitely number one. And I don't, I don't believe they go one, two, three. All right, we got a couple little things to look up now to make sure we're right, but that is definitely blue with orange trace. And obviously somebody's already been here because, you know, the wire harness is already opened up. This clip's already broke. Sweet. Let's go, uh, let's get a factory wiring diagram here and see. I think uh, first thing we want to do is we want to get the fire in order here. That should be under ignition. Cylinder ID and fire in order. That's inline fours, five cylinders, six cylinder, inline six, V6, three liter turbo, three two, three seven, three nine. All other V6 engines except three O turbo diesel. All other V6 engines except. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it should be right. Yeah, 135, 246 in the front. So that should be correct. Okay, let's carry on. All right, so I've got us a, <clears throat> excuse me, an OEM wiring diagram. So we've got our auto shutdown relay. Let's see. Comes down here to our ignition coil one, two, number three. Look, lucky, lucky, dark blue with an orange trace, and then brown with gray, which is our feed, which is our common on all the ignition coils there. Yep, brown and gray. It's a power feed, and then we've got our driver. So, again, Mitchell's wrong, as usual. Uh, all right, so I'm bringing out the boss, the scope on a rope. Um... I've got the key on engine off, of course, on a Chrysler that does not turn on the auto shutdown relay. Can we front probe that? Ooh, we can't. She's very tight. Uh, let me get, ooh, those are some tiny, tiny pins. Let me grab a probe here so we can front probe this without damaging it. Let's see if this one works. Hey, it does, look at that. Okay, so where's the brown wire? Or gray, I guess it would be. All right, so this wire here should be. Let me just check some. Kind of checking pin pin drag here. Um, try to get the light set. I don't want to blind you guys. Get this out of my way. <clears throat> I don't really feel like there's much there. All right, well, anyhow, so we're going to probe this, check our test light, test light works. We'll probe this. When the auto shutdown relay is on, we should have 12 volts here. I'm going to use the scan tool to turn it on. It's on, it's off, on, off. Okay, so we have power supply, so that's good. So I think what we'll do next, <coughs> we've got, the, uh, got the Pico firing up. Uh, why don't we grab a current clamp on this? You know, just to see what it, see what it looks like, see what's happening. Um, I suspect it's probably going to work briefly when we initially start the vehicle, and then it's going to it's going to shut off. I doubt that we have a uh, failed coil simply because you know they've already played Swaptronics and you know moved things around, uh, and evidently are still having a problem on the cylinder. So I'd be kind of curious to see what that does. Um, you know, do we have any control of this coil at all or not? Uh, this may give us some good clues uh, because maybe, you know, maybe we have no control of the coil whatsoever. If we do, I think what we should do next after that is, and we could probably do it simultaneously, is grab the uh, primary voltage waveform so we can see what's actually happening inside this coil. 
uh, to see why the PCM doesn't like it, but I think the easiest non-intrusive test is to just go get a current clamp, current ramp. I have to bear with my terminology today. I've probably already called it in an injector at least twice. Uh, we'll get our current ramp of this coil and see what the thunder we see. I don't even know. But first thing first, just so we have a baseline of known good, let's get a known good. I mean, there shouldn't be anything uh, fancy about this coil, but we'll get a known good off cylinder numero uno, and then that way we know what we're looking for on number two, and uh, everybody will be happy. And the other beautiful thing is the vehicle is almost out of gas if the gas gauge works correctly. Um, we're gonna set up a trigger here. All right, uh, let me throw my current clamp on here. We'll take and we'll zero that little guy out. I'll throw it around. Control wire. We've got to go in the right direction. Let me go ahead and start this baby up. First try. Imagine that. Oh, see that? What the thunder is that all about? This thing's ain't some kind of multi spark system, right? That was weird. Very interesting. All right, so that's cylinder number one. She run about 13 amps. Engine's shaking like crazy. All right, so I took my clamp off. I'm gonna go on coil number three. And we've got nothing. So I tell you what, let's set this on a a long time basis here. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off and then restart it to see if that captures it. Shut it off. Did it work briefly? Didn't. Tell you what, let me uh, let me ditch the trigger. I'm gonna shut it off and start it again. Whoa, I crap, this guy scared me. Okay, here we go. You ready? We got anything? We got nothing. And we know from looking at scan data that our injector briefly works and then shuts down. We make sure our current clamp is still working here. All right, so that's the number one cylinder. And that is the number three control wire right there. So let me shut it off so we don't run out of gas. The tank does sound like it's empty when you first turn the key on. All right, so what's that tell us? That tells us that we have no, we got no control. We're out of control. Uh, we have no control being sent to that coil. A um, couple things. And we also didn't have it briefly when we restarted the car. Um, whereas when we looked at scan data earlier, when we reset the car, you know, shut off, started back up, we, you know, we briefly have injector pulse. Uh, at that point, I assume the ECM is looking for, you know, a firing event through primary voltage, which it isn't seeing. Uh, so there's no sense in us checking that because we wouldn't have, if we don't have current flow, we don't have primary voltage, I'll tell you that. Um, I guess what we can do, you know, obviously we'll do so, you know, basic coil check, make sure that coil's good. <laughs> um, you know, if the coil's good, then we're actually going to have to check that control wire from the ECM to the... Uh, ignition coil, if the wire is good, then this baby needs a new ECM. 
uh, let's just hope it's a broken wire because then we can fix it today in one little video. Um, but I am going to go, I'm going to go get some Advil Bump. and uh, we'll carry on. What's up, Mrs. Oh, she's home. Never mind. Trick you guys. I just got to come in and see if she's got any drugs in here. She really keeps the stash. There she is. Oh, sounds like I'm getting lucky. Oh, some little girl dropped us off some homemade homemade dog treats. The dogs love them. Look at that. There's one. There's two. Man, I only got one left. Better tell Mrs. O, because if you deal with the public, you need this stuff, let me tell you. Alright. Anyhow. Back at it. Alright, so a couple ways we can check to see if it has a bad coil. First way we could just swap it with the other one. Alright, that would be easiest. Or we'll just do a quick uh, resistance check on the primary. We know what the amperage is, so we should know what the resistance is. So what was it? 13 amps. Want to take a guess on the resistance? 13 amps. 1 amp, 1 volt, 1 ohm. I over VR, something like that. So we should be about 1 ohm, right? If we're pulling out 13 amps. Can you guys see that? You can't see squat, can you? You still can't see anything. Now yeah, let's see. We got her on a graph. Let's, uh, let's get her up here all full digital. There we go. So there's that. You can't see it though, right? Freaking camera, there we go. So our meter leads are good. Now let's see if I can get down in here. Boy, them little, them little probes are tiny little guys. Let's see if I can touch them. We'll test the known good first. Known good says, both, one point, if I can hold still. All right, good one is about one ohm, just as we suspected it would be. All right, let's see here, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, okay. And hold still here. Well, anyhow, that's a good one, so about, about one ohm, and that's, that's what we expected. So let's check the suspicious one. Let's see if I can get in here on this little guy. And we are 0.8. All right, so our ignition coil is good. We know that. Um, like I say, you know, we could have swapped it, we could have turned on the auto shutdown relay, made sure that, you know, the power is going in through the coil and out on the control side. I'm a little, I got, I got to be honest, these, uh, I'm a little suspicious of these pins. I don't know if they've been front probing it or something like that. So I tell you what, while we're right here, we can, uh, we can't back probe it because we might disturb it if it is a pin fitment issue. Uh, so I say, what I say we do, you guys are going to love this, we're going to poke a wire. Probably the first time on the SMA channel. My buddy Keith would be proud of me. I know he's watching right now, so this is for you Keith. We're going to grab our test light, which I keep nice and sharp. Uh, we're going to go on the ground. Uh, I'm going to grab the scan tool. We're going to poke. The control wire to make sure that the power is going in the coil and out of the coil. I just want to be sure we don't have a pin fitment issue there. Uh, let me grab the virus and uh, we'll do that. All right, here we go. We're going to turn the auto shutdown relay on. Let's see, the ASD relay is on, so theoretically, if I can do this without drawing blood, we should have power, which we do. So our test light lights up. So that means. Our pin fitment is good, it's not the issue. You know, we've got power going into the coil, we've got power coming out. And then we should have, you know, control. It should be pulling this signal down. Um, so what we need to do, 
We'll turn that off. Yes, I'm gonna fix the wire, just settle down. I'm not gonna use RTV because we all know about the vinegar acid stuff that's in that. So we'll put uh, a little liquid electrical tape on there. And we'll take care of our little, our little prick hole. Uh, so what we can do is go right to the ECM or we'll look on a wire diagram, find the other sub connector. Uh, I assume it's the ones down close to the ECM down there. We'll turn the auto shutdown relay on and we'll see if we're getting power, uh, you know, back to the ECM and then, you know, check pin fitment there and then, I don't know, ship it, I guess. Make a, we'll, we'll see what's happening. That's all we can do. All right, so I think instead of looking for, uh, you know, looking up and getting that other connector that's in this harness, we'll just go, we'll just go right to the ECM. Uh, it's in front of the uh, left front wheel. Sweet place to put it, uh, but I just looked down in there. It looks like the connector might even be like half open right now. Somebody's already been in there because the connectors on top of it are all busted. Uh, you know, they're broke out of their holders. So we'll just go right down to ECM. We'll find out what pin it is there. We'll back probe it. You know, you know obviously if we have power from the ignition coil there is what it is. Um, I still can't help but think you know, seeing that double firing event on that number one cylinder, that's kind of weird. You know, so that's kind of still in the back of my mind as to why that happened. You know, we saw that on the Pico there. So I don't know. I don't know if something wonky is going on in the, in the ECM or what the deal is. But uh, let's get it up in the air and get to that ECM and just do it. Well, we got her up in the air. The plastic flap has already been removed for us. There's where the magic box lives. Here's what I was seeing from up top is this. So they've already, they've already done busted the connector. <laughs> oh, I have no idea how other shops stay in business. Um, you know, visual inspection, you know, these wires, they run up over top of this really sharp metal bracket here. I'm not gonna touch anything or touch as little as possible. Um, before we assume the wire we're after is in the already busted connector, we're going to take a look to see which connector we need to go after. That way we can just do it the first time. I assume it's probably that one. And we're going to have to fidget the lock, the retaining lock out of it because they broke the cam. That typically would open it, you know, unless we can get it to work or something, but typical MO, baby. Okay, so it says connector C2, 52 cavities, it's a brown, it's a female, with 52 cavities. Uh, let's see, coil, number three, it's pin 49, circuit K18, dark brown with orange, or dark blue with orange, 16 gauge wire, coil number three control. So that is going to be, so we've got 1 through 24, so that by default would make that one there 48. That's 49. Right? Would have to be. Well, let's have a look. Let's see if we can find our 52 cavity brown female. Alright, I've got to have you guys back there because I need to be up here. Um, lo and behold, as we guessed, our broken connector is, I don't want to call it broken, the connector that's been touched before is the brown one. Uh, so we're talking about brown, the cavity of the ECM is brown. One's brown, one's gray. So I'm going to cut, being that it's already busted, we'll use that to our advantage. We'll chop that off. We'll pull the cover off. I assume that's what they did. All right, we will find, we'll leave it plugged in for the time being. There we are, guy. We'll find pin 49, which should be right on the end. I believe I see it already, which is awesome. I wonder what's supposed to be next to it. I see a blue with an orange stripe. And right next to it appears to be a dark blue and a blue with a gray. So let's, I'm just going to go verify that and then we'll get a back probe. All right. 
wire colors verified. I'll grab ground here on the engine block. Wish I had something to verify this on. Well, if it doesn't light up, we'll definitely verify our test equipment. I got a back probe. Uh, I am going to very gingerly slip it in her cavity. It's number 49. Feels like it's in. Oops, I've said that before. We'll toggle on the auto shutdown relay. We'll back probe it. Oh, folks, I got no test light action. Let me just make sure my back probe is good. The auto shutdown relay is on, I can hear it. Just make sure my back probe is good. Back probe feels good. Make sure our ground is good. Oh, there we go, bad ground. I'm getting excited. Come on out of there, little guy. Okay. All right, so there, our test light is lit, was lit, is lit. Um, it's flickering because of my crappy ground. It's your ground right to the battery, okay. So there's that. In theory, if I take the auto shutdown relay and turn it off, our test light should go out. Let's see, in my little donger here. And it goes out. And it goes on. And the show's over. We're in the right hole. Oh, you gotta be sure of that. Yep, 49. No, we're in 49 because the wires next to it are the colors that matched. What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna let it down. We'll shut the key off. We'll unplug the ECM. We'll have a look, visual inspection, just to see what the little guy looks like. I don't see any evidence of the accident being up here. Of course, this always makes you wonder, you know, now that everybody's played Swaptronics with, um, you know, with the coils, you know, did they have a bad coil? They got a coil, hang on, that's, you know, shorting out, shorted out you know, that did this, that burned up the coil driver, but, you know, now we've swapped everything around, you know, that's, you know, what if we had, what if we had a coil that failed, killed the driver, now what? You know, now what do you do? Put a box in it, and, I mean, you know, you could have a coil that shorts, I don't know if these have current limiting devices in them or not, um, possibly. Uh, you know if they can detect this code, so I don't know, you know, newer ECMs are pretty good about that You know if you have an EC a coil that's shorted, you know, it'll, it'll a lot of times stop it from burning up the driver uh, Because they do have coil limiting, you know, devices in them you know, Obviously they're measuring secondary primary voltage, you know, so they're pretty high-tech in that regards So, you yeah, know, let me shut the key off on this little fella well, I snap that cover back on it with the red lock because that's got the cam it's got the gears that are going to disengage the teeth I'm just going to try to hold it down get it wiggle I'm trying to get that lock pins out it's just kind of a pain in the ass sometimes when people do stuff like this there jeez there's our connector. We'll uh, visual inspection. So the pin we we're in is back here. I just want to make sure something's not just pushed out, pulling out. Yep, so there's verification there because I can see the numbers now. So we were 100% in the correct connector. So it's the second one in. Pin looks good, it's not pushed out. Get a mirror so I can see up inside the ECM there. Have a look at that. Make sure they're not all waffled up.
Yeah, they look nice and clean and straight. I don't know what to tell you, baby. Um, they got a lot of stuff to fix that, you know, has been touched. The other thing we got to check now is we got to check South Main Auto's ability to reflash ECM. We know we can, we know we can flash it, but we got to know because I don't have a factory scan tool if we can get past the security. Always got having problems. You always got to get past security in life. So I don't know if the Autel has a um, ECM replacement option, so we can resync the wireless control module with the ECM after it's all done. That I don't know. I know we can we can program the ECM, but as far as anything after that. I don't know. Uh, the last Chrysler I just did, I just did a Cummins at 07 Dodge, and that was easy. Um, just had to rewrite the VIN in that one. The Cummins ECMs come program. We put a used one in it and just had to get rid of the VIN mismatch code. So uh, I'll do some digging here. I'll get this connector, see if I can't get this thing put back together so it'll work. Get the zip tie back on it. We'll fix what we did. We'll leave all the mess for the other guy. And then we'll give them a call in the morning. All right, now that I've put the whole thing back together, I want to try to get this connector pop back off, get the cover back off, because what I should have done, and I didn't do, I neglected to do, is to 100% verify circuit integrity. Make sure we're not, you know, some silly chance shorted to another circuit on the auto shutdown relay. We should have, great, they had the connector all popped apart, I should have left it popped apart. Uh, what we should have done is probe this with the test light, you know, turn the auto shutdown relay on, and then go up there and unplug the number three coil, and when we unplug the coil, the test light goes out, that will 100% confirm circuit integrity. I neglected to do that. So let me get this connector here back off. We will reprobe. Let's go back in the 49th cavity. I hate to, uh, you know, make the call on the ECM and then find out I made a silly mistake. That was avoidable. Okay, so we're probed back in. We're gonna shove our test light back in there. Uh, let's see, we still got our scan tool here. Okay, auto shutdown relay is on. Test light's lit. Let's let the car down. Um, again, we'll let the car down. <laughs> we'll unplug the number three coil. Our light should go out. And if our light goes out, because that's going to break the circuit, if our light goes out, then we know we're not shorted to another circuit. We know there's nothing. There ain't no silliness happening here. So let's do that. We'll just do it live. We're rolling live today. set back up under there. You watch the test light. Tell me if the light goes out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to unplug number three right now. Did the light go out? It indeed did. We'll plug that coil back in. Light should theoretically come back on, and it did. So that, folks, is that. The ECM is garbage. Uh, the coil driver for the number three ignition coil, I think I keep calling it an injector, is no good. It just has no control. I really wish nobody touched this van because I would love to know which coil was the original coil there. Uh, probably we could just current ramp the coils. I'm sure there's probably a lot that runs off that fuse. We can take a look, just current ramp them, see if there's any oddball one in there drawing like an insane amount of current. If there's not, then, you know, your guess is as good as mine. So that's that. I'm going to poke around on some of the scan tools I have 
and see if any of them had the PCM replacement procedure uh, to kind of resync things here. Uh, if we do get the job on changing the ECM, I'm not sure where he's going to go with this. Uh, you know, if the customer is going to the other shop, you know, I'm just getting paid to diagnose it and tell them what's wrong with it. So hopefully we get the ECM job. That would be sweet. And uh, I'll let you guys know what happens here. So I went ahead and grabbed the auto, uh, put in the information for this vehicle. And I believe we'll be all set. That's why I like the auto. This thing knocks the various right out of the water. Uh, so we do have... Uh, PCM replace option here. So after we reprogram the PCM, let's see what's it say. Use this function only when PCM is replaced. Um, yep, so this is going to resync our keys with the wireless control module and the ECM that we put in it. So we should be good if we do just a regular J2534 programming on the ECM. We should be able to use this tool to get the car running. So I'll see if we can sell them a computer. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, it does look like, uh, you know, we're in business if we need to program it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we should be. Anyhow, uh, you know, assuming all goes well. But you never know. Things get kind of screwy around here. Uh, I don't know if they're going to want to go for a used ECM or a new one, uh, or if we can even do a used one, you know, and, and not have, you know, some VIN mismatch problems, something like that. Uh, and I guess that's it. Uh, we'll wait till the morning to give them a call. If there is a part two, which hopefully there is, I'll be able to bring you guys along. And we'll see how the whole programming rigmarole goes with this little fella. And uh, we'll take it from there. So otherwise, it was a good diagnosis. You know, pretty cut and dry, pretty quick. It just takes the wind right out of my sail, though, when I see what other shops do. And, you know, the mess they make along the way. Because it's completely unnecessary. You know, I don't know. That's a whole other video in itself. It's just depressing uh, to see it, you know, broken stuff, missing stuff. You know, even the point that it got driven over here, you know, no air cleaner in it. You know, just kind of hodgepodge together. Brackets are hanging off it. Bolts are missing. For what? You know, for crying out loud, you had one code, two wires, and that's it. So, I suppose it's probably lack of service information lack of proper diagnostic routine maybe i don't know but just it hits me in my feels i'll be honest with you because i try to go in there like a ninja i don't want anybody to know where i was or what i was doing and you know whatever anyhow whatever dude that's what i say so uh google plus facebook all that business check us out there subscribe to our channel make sure you click the notification bell on near the subscribe thing uh, so you get notified uh, when we put out videos each and every week and as much as time allows so if I can do it you can do it Isn't that right thanks for watching